Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna to use your suggestions to improve my miter station. Not too long ago, I made this really simple but very functional miter saw station and it's worked out really well overall. But in that video, I ask you guys to leave some suggestions in the comments about how it could be improved and expanded. So today we're gonna take some of the stuff I've learned and some of your suggestions and make this thing better. Let's do it. One of the suggestions in the comments that was really good and really simple was to add a chamfer to this channel. Since this 90 degree angle fits right into this 90 degree angle, any of the sawdust that lands here can end up kind of binding this stop block. So I'm gonna take these off and just sand down the back to add a little channel so that the sawdust doesn't get in the way. Another comment that came up a few times is that this design does not allow for a compound miter cut. And by that, I mean that this miter saw can both rotate the blade and lean the blade at 45 degrees. And when you do those at the same time, it's called a compound miter cut. This is not a cut I do very often, so I didn't really think about it when I was designing this, but what is probably the largest part of this entire project is gonna to be to remove this center section and make it wider to give the saw enough room to lean over. Other than the width, one of the biggest problems here is that the front face plate is screwed into place and not very easy to remove. So I pulled that front plate off and basically ripped out the entire center section to start over. It was really interesting to look at the bottom of this to figure out what areas didn't allow for the sawdust to fall down into the dust collection. I had some ideas about how to improve that in the next version. For the most part, I hadn't used glue when putting this together on purpose so that I could take it apart if I needed to. That allowed me to reuse a lot of these 2x4s and some of the plywood. I set the saw on the floor and moved it into all the different positions that it might need to go into to figure out the maximum width for this area. Instead of doing the double to where it flips both directions, I decided to only make it flip one direction so that the table didn't have to be too long in the middle. So if you really wanted to be able to use both sides of the compound cut, you're gonna have to make the table pretty wide. I cut down some longer pieces of two x four to create a wider table, but otherwise it was identical to what I did in the first video. If you haven't seen the original video for how to put this together, be sure to go check it out. I'll have a link down below. I had to move my cabinet a little bit closer to the wall, and that's one of the reasons I didn't make it so that the miter saw could swing in both directions. I am limited about how far I can push one side. After that, I scooted the table over to have enough room to put in the new center section, and then I used some clamps to make a cleat to set this section on while I screwed it in place. I wanted to reuse as much plywood as I could, but I needed a larger piece for the tabletop. I used a circular saw to first break down a half inch sheet to make it a little bit easier to deal with the large pieces. The old box was put together with some glue and brad nails, so I knocked it apart and tried to salvage as much as I could. This was pretty easy, I just had to pull out some of the extra nails and then trim off the glued edges from the old pieces. This let me reuse the side panels because they weren't going to change in size at all. Mainly, I just needed a new bottom, back, and top. And just like I did the first time, I put on the connectors for the dust collection and used a 2x4 spacer to account for the frame underneath. I traced the outsides of these and then moved in a little bit so that I could cut out a hole that was just slightly smaller than the fitting itself. I used a small roundover bit in my trim router to slope the edges of this opening in hopes that a little bit more sawdust would fall down into the dust collection. I reassembled the box the same way I'd done before. I made sure that it fit, but before screwing it down, I wanted to add some grates to the dust collection holes. I wanted to make sure that only sawdust went down those holes and not any extra chunks of wood. For this grate, I'm using expanded steel. I wanted to make sure that the holes were big enough not to stop any sawdust, but small enough not to let through any big chunks.
The shape of these didn't really matter, they just needed to be large enough to cover the opening, so I just cut down some simple rectangles and made sure that they were large enough. When you cut this stuff, the edges get really nasty and sharp, so I made sure to take these back to a sander and clean off all the edges. They're still pretty sharp, but they're not going to cut your hand from just touching them. After that, I just laid them over the holes and tried to line up the hole in the grate with the hole in the fitting. It actually worked out pretty well to hold everything in place with a few screws. You could definitely create this as a feature on all sides of the box, but I decided to cut one piece of wood with two 45 degree angles so that it would set in the back corner, forcing all the sawdust to drop down into the holes and not stack up in the corner. Then I just drilled a new hole for the power cord and put the saw back in place. I slid it around and tried to make sure that it was centered enough to be able to move in all the ways it needed to move, and not too far back. And just like before, I used a straight edge to make the fence of the saw line up with the fences that I built on the outside, and used several screws to hold the saw in place. Next, it was time to make the new faceplate for the shroud. Instead of the Luan that I used before, I used this whiteboard material just because I had a big sheet of it left over, and it actually worked out pretty cool, because then I have a drawing surface on the front of the box. I decided to use the old cover that I would made before as a template. I held it on the top of the box and made sure that the saw could move around in all the ways that it needed to move except the compound miter cuts. I'll get to that in a minute. I measured the distance from the corner of the box and then measured that over on my new piece of material. Once I had the template placed, I traced out the opening to match the old opening and then cut it out with a jigsaw. After I had a good fit, I used a half inch piece of scrap to draw some lines from the outer edge. I glued a few rare earth magnets right on the inside of those lines so that they would line up with some nuts that I also glued on the inside of the box. I had to redo a couple of these and pull them closer to the front edge. These need to be really close so they grab the magnets. Basically I just did what I had already done and just made it larger, but now if I want to make a compound cut, I can snap that off and when I'm done with the cut, I just snap it right back in place. Behind the rails on this, there's a huge amount of area that you could use for any kind of storage that you need, and everybody's probably going to make their own thing that's specific to them. For me, I'm going to make some shelves that hold these containers. These are the same containers that I use to hold all my different types of hardware, and I've already made these shelves, but now I'm going to recreate these and put them on the miter saw station. I figured out the full width of two of these containers plus a center divider and the two outer walls. The top, bottom, and all the shelves were made out of half inch ply. The side walls and the center divider were all three quarter inch. This is mainly so that there's enough material on the side walls to be able to cut in a dado. Another really handy thing about having the stop blocks on the miter saw is being able to make one cut, flip the piece over, and finish out a deeper cut than the saw blade could do by itself. I swapped out my table saw blade with the dado stack, and if you're not familiar, this is multiple blades stacked up so that you can get a thicker cut. And in this case, I stacked up enough pieces to be able to get a half inch slot. This makes a perfect slot for my half inch shelves to fit right in. I just spaced out the cuts by three inches, which is enough room for each one of these containers to go in, and I got perfectly evened out shelves. I made a mark where the center was of each shelf and then slid in a piece of 3 quarter inch ply to add as a spacer. This supports each one of the shelves and keeps the containers from sliding left and right. And these boxes were made to sit on top of the fence on each side of the table. So I made some really simple spacers out of 2x4 scraps to put underneath them in the back. And instead of putting a full sheet on the back of this to stop things from falling out, I just cut some scraps and glued them right along the back face of each shelf as a stop.
The last thing here is to add a couple of rulers to both of the fences, and to do that, I got this flexible ruler, it's got an adhesive back, and it's metal faced. This stuff is really thin, I'm just gonna put it on the face of these fences, but if you really wanted to, you could route a shallow channel so it was embedded and completely flush. So I'm just gonna stick this on, one that reads left to right, and one that reads right to left. I made a mark 16 inches from the outside of the blade, so I had a place to line up the ruler. I also drew a line half inch up off the table to try to keep the ruler straight. This stuff is really simple, it's just peel and stick. And just a note, you can cut this with a utility knife, but scissors worked way better. And that's about it. It's a bunch of small changes, but it did make this workstation, I think, way more usable. And a lot of that is due to your suggestions. So thank you. You may not need to do all of this stuff to your miter saw station, but shelves like this can be used in all sorts of different places. Adding an adhesive ruler can make any table or any tool more usable. Hopefully there's some stuff in this project that will be useful in your shop. I really appreciate all the input and the comments. If you have any other comments about this, leave them down below. And if you wanna see some other types of projects, I've got quite a few here for you to check out and don't forget to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I upload. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Today we're gonna to use your suggestions to improve my miter station. My, 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 let me do another one.